Hi, everyone. So uh, I'm having a feeling that today is going to be a pretty autistic day. And I'm not even two hours into it. I just, I you know, because I wake up late. It's almost noon. But um, it's just going to be one of those days. And to me, autistic days are not necessarily bad days. Um, I can just tell that there, it's going to be a day or I'm just kind of bumbling around trying to make my way through the day, through life. I don't know how to better explain it, but... Um, so like I get up and Chewy has been out of the litter that we get for the cats. So I was going to go to to Walgreens across the street with the express purpose of just buying cat litter. And so I get in my car and it says that the tire pressure on one of my tires is like really, really low. And I don't know how to do that. I Alicia always does it for me, like puts the air in the tire. Like we have this machine she uses in the driveway or sometimes she'll just go to the gas station and use the air pump there. And I know it's probably really easy. You just unscrew the thing, you put the air in. But to me, it seems very daunting and I don't want to have to do that if I don't have to. So she always takes care of it for me. But um, I probably shouldn't have driven the car. I mean, it, the pressure was pretty low and it had just turned from like 85 degree weather down to like 45, 50 degrees. So every time that happens, like um, it fucks with like our tires. Um, Because I didn't think I had a hole in it. But anyways, so I was just like, no big deal. I'll just go across the street, go to Walgreens, get the cat litter, come home and get started on my work. And then so I went to Walgreens and as soon as I went in there, I couldn't help it. It was like something took over my body and I deviated to the candy aisle to see if there was any more spree. Because I've been out for a few days. And um, so, yeah, and that is the only candy in the entire aisle that had a hole where the candy should be. So I decided to go see if those bins were still up front and they were. And I went up there and I dug, 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 dug. And I found one box of spree. And I was like, yes. And then I looked around. I was like, oh shit. Like, I don't want to look this excited over candy. Nobody was around. Thank goodness. So I got my spree. It was totally worth it, that one box. Um, But anyways, and then I get back into the car because, like I said, I'm going to come home and get started on work. And as I turn down, <clears throat> sorry, as I turn down my street, uh oh, my voice is like cracking. Sorry for all my gross sounds. Um, But anyways, as I turn down the street. There's my professor from 10 years ago when I was in community college with um, Mr. Higgins. I'm pretty sure he's autistic and he was walking in my neighborhood like he was on the opposite side of my house. So what I did was I just kept driving because like he's lived in Syracuse probably his whole life. We moved here 10 years ago and... I've only seen him a handful of times. Uh, Well, I should say he's only seen me a handful of times. I've seen him way more. I've just like, you know, not really gone out of my way to say hi, which maybe it's rude, but I don't like to just, I just don't like talking to people. And so I haven't had to talk to Mr. Higgins since before the pandemic started. Like right before, before it started, I remember... I I saw him at Wegmans. I was going in. He was coming out. He's a nice guy. It's just very awkward conversation. Neither of us know how to talk properly, which makes me think he's super autistic. Plus, like thinking back to how he was when he was teaching, there's no way he's not. But we just don't talk very well. And it just, he wants to keep trying. <laughs> he just would stand there and he'll just try and try and try. And like the conversations can last like 15 minutes. And you know... When you don't want to have conversations, 15 minutes is a long fucking time. So I'm t- so I when I saw him walking, because he does, there's a couple of autistic people, a few actually, in the neighborhood that they take walks at the same time every day, just about. Mr. Higgins deviates a little bit. He takes them at different times, but they do it every day. It's like part of their routine. And he was on his walk. And so instead of turning into my driveway, I just went, I just kept driving down the street. And maybe he noticed that it was my car and that I kept driving. 
because I saw him look, but like maybe he didn't. I'm hoping he didn't realize what I did. Um, and I felt a little bit guilty, but I knew that as soon as I pulled into my driveway, he would have seen me. And in his mind, it's been like years since him and I have had a conversation and he would have come right over and we would, would have chatted for like 15 minutes. And I just didn't want to do that today or ever really. So I just kept driving. It's not any different than the one time I came home and we ordered food and the delivery person was bringing food up to the house. And I just kept going down the street and I went around the block before I came back. And so, yeah, my, one of my tires was not doing too well and I probably shouldn't have driven it, but I just kept driving and I went around some side streets, drove for a few minutes and I was like, okay, he's got to be out of like my part of the neighborhood by now. And then I went home. Some might say that that's rude. I say, I only have so many fucks to give every day and those were not one of them. To have a conversation with somebody. So maybe that sounds mean or rude or whatever. But um, yeah, I just, that's how much I did not want to have a conversation. Because like, it's just, it's not fun. I like him. He's a nice guy. I just don't like talking, period, to like people that aren't Alicia. Because I don't do well at it. Um, So yeah. So that's how my day's been going so far. Um... What did I get on here to talk about? Oh, yeah. So I think I had made a comment on my last episode that I had a case of road rage. I don't know if I said this or not because my brain sucks. Um, But last week when I was driving Alicia to ketamine therapy, the last trip, the one there and back, not the first one where I dropped her off, but the second one, it was the worst fucking traffic. And this is city driving And it took so long to get from my house to all the way where her therapy is, which is like supposed to only be about 40-ish minutes away, 45, but it was much longer. And being stuck in traffic doesn't bother me for the reason it might bother other people. Like, I don't, I'm not like, oh, this is so slow. We're just inching along. This sucks. Like, that's not where my thoughts are. My thoughts are there are so many fucking cars. There are so many cars in different lanes. Am I in the right lane? Like, how do I get over to this lane? There's so many cars. There's no spaces. And I'm just worried about all the traffic. And I don't want to hit anybody. I don't want anybody to hit me. And this is still during the day. This isn't even at night when I'm blind. Um, And I didn't have a good time. And I didn't realize how much it bothered me until I had picked her up and we were on the way back home. And it was worse because at that point it was like quarter after five. Everybody was getting off of work. Um, It was it should have been easier because the way that Syracuse is like I'm sure it's like most major cities is people come to the city to work and then they leave to go home because they live other places. So when Alicia and I worked um like when we had our last job where we worked like I don't know half an hour away 35 minutes away the rush hour traffic didn't affect us because when we were coming into the city everybody else was leaving so it was kind of like that but this time it was different and there was just traffic no matter what and I flipped a few people off um then we were going down this eight mile stretch of road and you can't pass and we got stuck behind this huge tractor trailer there was just a line of like 30 cars now that's an instance where i'm like fuck this this is taking too long why are you driving so goddamn slow there's so many cars behind you do you not know that there's a line of cars behind you and it's traffic hour like why are you going so fucking slow like go the speed limit like that's all people need to do is just go the speed limit And this dude was, like, driving 15 miles under that. And I was pissed. And so when I'm picking Alicia up from therapy, the ketamine therapy, she's still kind of, like, under the influence, but not really. It's more like she's still, like, processing what just happened. So I don't talk to her um, because I don't want to disrupt that process for her. 
And so I recognized that I was getting really, really pissed and having road rage that I haven't had in years. And I just wanted to scream. That's how irritated I was. So instead, I just gripped the steering wheel with both of my hands. I just tightened my grip on the steering wheel as tight as I could go. Like, I thought I was going to break the steering wheel. That's how hard my grip was because that's how hard it was to not just scream. <laughs> um, You know, because that would have... I didn't want to do that after she just got out of that kind of therapy. It was so hard to contain my emotions. It was so hard. But she did see me when I flipped off some people. I couldn't hide that. Um, and I didn't like because I didn't like that I felt that way. Because that reminded me of how I used to be on a regular basis with traffic. Just for years. I've always been an asshole driver. Like, I'll go the speed limit around town. I'll go faster on the highway. But if you don't use your turn signal when you're turning, you get a honk. If you are riding my ass when you don't have to, you get a finger. Like, learn how to fucking drive. If everybody would just learn how to drive properly, there wouldn't be any issues. Um, but anyways, this is just a rant. That was not a good time at all. And I was in meltdown mode. Because I don't like driving in traffic. I wish I was easier with it. I don't know how people can go to work every day, get off of work at the same time everybody else is, and then everybody's trying to make it home at the same time. That's so stupid. Like, why can't more people be shift workers or something? Or why can't there be better traffic patterns? Or why do the lights have to take forever to change? Like, those are fucked up too. Um, <laughs> sorry. I just, that was not a, that was not a good try, a drive. Not a good drive. And then I get home. And I don't know how much of this I shared before if I shared anything. So if this is a repeat, I'm sorry. But then we get home and she knows as soon as we were getting out of the car, she's like, I know, um, leave you alone, let you be in your room. And then like, you know, I'll go off and do my own thing or whatever. And normally I would have been like, how rude. But this time I was like, thank goodness she knows that she needs to just leave me alone as soon as we get in the house. And so she did. And I stayed in my room and I tried to decompress because like it was stressful. And then I'm sitting here judging myself for having these thoughts and feelings about what I figured should be just a simple drive. How do people do this on a daily basis? I don't know how. How are they just okay with like, oh, it's going to take me over an hour to get home. I'm okay with that. I'll just listen to some music or make a phone call and pass the time. Like, no. Wait, so I guess it does bother me to be stuck in traffic and not go anywhere. But. Anyways. Um. That was the kind of the point of me getting on today was to talk about that. But I guess I didn't have as much to say about it as I thought I did. Um, other than. Like. I don't know how to not be annoyed by this shit, by traffic and stuff. I don't know how to not be anxious about it. Um, and. It's already getting darker earlier, which means that if she keeps this ketamine therapy up, because right now I think we have dates through the rest of the month, and then she's going to reevaluate with her therapist for ketamine, and they're going to go from there. So I have no idea if she's going to keep doing these sessions. But if she is, it's getting darker earlier, and that means by the time I have to go pick her up and bring her home, it's going to already be dark, and I'm going to have to drive both ways in the dark. And I can't see for shit in the dark. Um, like when I was driving home from my last job, and we lived so far away. It was just highway driving. It was easy. There weren't all these starts and stops. It was just highway driving. And then this is different. This is just a bunch of like city traffic driving, turning and like getting in the right lane. And um, it's very overwhelming for me. And I'm surprised I can even drive at all. If I'm honest, driving is scary. But I didn't really have a choice when I lived on my own. And so I had to drive and I figured it out. And then 
it's just one of those things where I'm sitting here wondering, like, um, or not wondering, but just, like, thinking about how interesting it is when, like, you have nobody to rely on but yourself. You can pretty much do what, uh, well, not the impossible, but you can do things that you didn't think you could do before. Um, or that you thought that you would only be able to do if somebody would help you with it. And, like, I knew that the driving... I knew it was just going to be hard for me based on my initial experiences with learning how to drive when I was a teenager. Um, I'm sure it's overwhelming for like any teenager, but my feelings of overwhelm never left me. They just have followed me every fucking year that I've been driving and uh, I don't know how I have made it this far in life and not gotten into like super serious accidents on a regular basis. So I don't know. Um, but I'm not proud of my road rage. I do want to talk to my therapist about that when I go see her next. Um, and that, wait, was that my control issues I was going to talk about with time? I think that was one of the things I'm, I wanted to mention too, if I didn't already, was the demands on my time. And um, sorry if I'm all over the place. I really can't remember if I've talked about this already or not because my short-term memory is just very, very crappy. But if you're listening out of order, then this doesn't matter to you. Um, But yeah, my last session when Alicia was there, we were talking about stuff and it was mostly me talking and it was mostly realizing that like I'm having such a hard time with um, my routines being interrupted. Um, And I, I don't know how to figure out like how to get to a point where this doesn't bother me so much. So this week, I don't have to drive her at all to ketamine therapy. She has the week off, which is great, which means my routines are intact. Things are going to be how I I like them to be. And hopefully no like major surprises, throwing wrenches into my days. But then next week, I have to drive her two times, two different days. That's a total of eight trips there and back. Um... And when I say like I lose three hours, um, that's just the total amount of driving. There and back, and then there and back again. When I go get her and bring her home, it's a total of three hours. And I don't like not being productive. I don't view... Um, I don't view like... Dropping her off and picking her, picking her up as productive, even though it's something necessary that has to happen. It just, I don't view it as productive. I am just stuck on the fact that like these are three hours of my life that I could have gotten a book done for work or several chores done at home or like turn some more bottles in because they're starting to pile back up in the basement again, the bags of water bottles. Um... And I think about, like, it's almost like I, I, it's almost like, um, I am thinking like I'm some victim or something. Like, how dare these constraints be put on me and my time and, you know, like it's some big ordeal when it really isn't, but three hours taken away from me, not doing what I want to do. I guess that's kind of like, I sound like a child, but I guess I haven't been used to that because I've been working for myself for years. I've been constructing my days the way I want them to be for years. Um, And then to have uh, three hours taken away from me. And I know, I know I don't have to look at it that way. It doesn't have to be taken away from me, but that's just how it feels right now. It's just like, I'd rather be doing anything else other than driving um, because I don't feel productive when I'm driving. I just feel relief whenever I get to like the destination without having gotten into like any accidents or whatever. But I have a lot of control over like my time and I get really, really pissed off when things are out of my control that affect how I utilize my time. Like I've talked before about how my therapist is horrible with being on time with appointments. Um, and she's a good therapist, but she just like runs late with her sessions. It doesn't seem like she's very good with her time management. Um, and like 
for years, I would be waiting 20 minutes past my appointment time at least before she would finally come out to get me after finishing with the person before me. And I'm sorry, but I can't just sit there and read or scroll through my phone for 20 minutes if I don't feel like I'm in the mood to do that. I just am like focused on like, you're late. Why are you late? Why aren't you on time? Do you not value my time? And then I personalize it. And so I finally had told Tia several months ago that this is how I've been feeling. Please give me your first or second appointment of the day so that I know I won't have to be waiting. And she did. But, um, yeah, I mean, even 20 minutes. Is this, like, uh, neurotic? This is probably pretty neurotic. But, like, 20 minutes. Do you know what I could have gotten done in 20 minutes? I could have been almost halfway through the fucking session. That's what I could have gotten done in 20 minutes and not just scrolled on my phone or, you know, tried to, like, taper my anger. I definitely have a lot of shit that I still need to work on. Oh, this sucks. Um, I I don't know if this was helpful. I feel like I was just all over the place and I was pretty ranty. And um, so I guess if you feel the same way, then this is relatable. And my job is done. Uh, however, if you've got this far and you're like, again, here's another episode. I don't know what was just talked about. I don't know if I benefited. I am so sorry. I'm not a pro at this. Um, you know what? I probably need to like just take an edible after I get off of this because I'm so strung out just thinking about that traffic. Like the way I was just describing it, it was as if I was just in that situation yesterday and not last week. So I don't know. Um, if I just talked about everything I've already talked about in another episode, whoopsie. Okay. Bye. Thank you for listening. Okay. But okay. Goodbye.